I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Cause truly you been really on my mind. And your presence with my soul alive. How can I be known and your name not be lifted high? Oh. The resurrection power living in me left to cry. I need a stress, them trust come with tests, yeah. Moving like a Tesla, got some moves they bless, yeah. Shine that light on your flesh like fair. Sipping on black, yeah, we sipping on red. Capping my rap and I do what I said. Revival is here, this the start of the end. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Tell me the truth and I promise you did. God is in rhythm, bro. Tell me what it is. Spirits moving even in the kids. If you think it's fake, then it is what it is. Ain't no cap in my rap. I tell you right now, got spirit moving. If you not live for Christ, then you ain't winning, boy. You I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on I feel like it's been like that all the time. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Cause truly you been really on my mind. And your presence with my soul alive. How can I be known and your name not be lifted high? Oh, The resurrection power living in me left to cry. I need a stress, them trust come with tests, yeah. Moving like a Tesla, got some moves they bless, yeah. Shine that light on your flesh like fair. Sipping on black, yeah, we sipping on red. I'm capping my rap and I do what I said. Revival is here, this the start of the end. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Tell me the truth and I promise you did. God is in rhythm, bro. Tell me what it is. Spirits moving even in the kids. If you think it's fake, then it is what it is. Ain't no cap in my rap. I tell you right now, got spirit moving. If you not live for Christ, then you ain't winning, boy. You I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Cause truly you've been really on my mind. And your presence with my soul alive. How can I be known and your name not be lifted high? Oh. All right. 
We are live. Good to see you guys. Make sure as you're jumping in because we're going to talk about how to cast out those stubborn demons you like and share. Smash that like button, guys. Share. And uh, we're going to have us a good time. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Now, I felt like the body of Christ needed to hear a little bit about how to cast out those stubborn demons. So I said, let me come on here and go live with you guys tonight and talk about some of my situations that I've come across um, along my journey. Now, just so you guys will know, I've been casting out demons as a Holy Ghost filled believer since 2013. So I've been doing this since 2013. Um, as soon as I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, one of the first things that happened uh, after that point was demons started to come out of people. Okay. So one of the things every believer should be doing actually is casting out demons. It's a command by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Mark 16, 15 through 18, Matthew 10, 8, Luke, uh, Luke 10, I believe. And, you know, yeah, I think, I think that's the places. I think that's the places. I may be missing a few, but Jesus has told us to cast out demons, basically, okay? So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're called to cast out demons. Now, look, this is going to be a good subject, guys, okay? And it's going to help a lot of you guys. And I believe that as you are coming against demonic forces on your walk with Christ, you're going to be able to take the information I'm giving you here today and apply it to your walk, which will make it easier. See, leaders in the body of Christ, if they're proper leaders, then they will give you the keys so you can do it easier and not have the same long process of understanding that they had to go through. And that's the goal, right? A good leader wants the people that they're teaching and equipping to actually do it a lot faster and better than they did. So I believe grace will be given to you guys given to you guys today in greater measure because we go from what glory to glory, faith to faith, and the grace of God is always increasing on your life. Believe it or not, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit actually increase the more that you utilize them. So the more you practice those gifts, the more you you are out there healing the sick, casting out demons, prophesying, getting words of knowledge, words of wisdom, you actually will notice that the grace on your life will start to grow and you'll get better and better and better. For example, if you prophesy a lot, what will eventually happen is you'll start getting names. You'll start getting, you can even get numbers. <laughs> I mean, street numbers. You can get all that stuff. The, the Lord will start to give you stronger words and knowledge uh, that will lead you into greater prophetic revelation. So the more you flex the muscle, the spiritual muscle, the more it grows. So get out there, guys, and use the gift and use it in the harvest field, okay? Use it in the harvest field. One of the best places that I have grown in the gifts of God on my life has not been in the four walls of the church. It has actually been out in the harvest field amongst people that are just your normal, everyday, average, average Joes and Sallies that are just living life. So that's what God wants us to do, right? <laughs> he said that the harvest field is ripe, but the laborers are few, okay? He didn't... <laughs> He didn't say the church is ripe and the laborers are few. All the laborers should be in the church getting sent out, you know? So it's, uh, it's a good place to go. But we're talking about stubborn demons today. So in my walk early on with casting out demons, I would come against, oh, man, all kinds just in, in my, my regular day. I would come against what I would call different ranks of demons. So... It, meaning that there would be one, there could be 10, there could be 100, there could be 1,000 in a person, however many it may be. Um, I would come against all, all kinds of things, all different types of dark, uh, of the kingdoms of uh, the kingdom of darkness that is within a person, uh, different types of demons. Like if you come up against just a regular unclean spirit that come from lust, sometimes that'll be easy to, to, easier to get out of person per se than getting that spirit of Leviathan, which is extremely stubborn. And if you read in Job, You'll read that it is very stubborn and that it has. It, it, you'll get in a fight with it, actually, is what it says in Job. If you go and you try to rattle that thing, it'll, it'll put you in a fight. So 
that is a definitely an example of a stubborn demon right there is Leviathan. Uh, those seducing spirits like Jezebel, ba- Baal, uh, things like that, you will see that they put up a fight, that they are very stubborn. So what is some, what is some other ones, man? My goodness. Spirits that claim to be Lucifer, Satan, uh, high-ranking demons like in the like they call themselves Azazel, whatever, whatever. These demons that got these names from the uh, demonic dictionary, <laughs> you know these these demons like to put up a strong fight. They like to to fight to to say they're not leaving. I'm not going. I'm stronger than you. Who do you think you are? I'm more powerful. Do you know how long I've been in this person? You know, I came, I've come across all of these things in my walk. I've come against the Hindu gods. I've come against them and people, you know, Shiva. Uh, I've come against, what's that thing? Um, Ganesh, all, all these, all these different things. I've even came across Il- Ilnana, who was a, uh, a demonic princess of Baal. I've came against her and people before, which she's just a seducing spirit that causes all kinds of issues and, and trouble. So I've came against her, uh, meaning that spirit that embodies Ilnana, that was a, the high priestess of Baal and all that. So all these demons were very stubborn. And I'm going to get into that. I'm just letting you guys know I've came across quite a few in my walk. OK, so as I've been in the especially in the beginning, my goodness, in the beginning, when I first started and I was just out there all the time on the streets everywhere, it was always it was very common for me going in even into people's houses. My goodness. I would go into people's houses. Ah, this is this is this is bringing back memories as I'm speaking to you guys. <laughs> I would go into people's houses, and when you go into a person's house, you're going into that demonic territory. I, I'm t- I'm saying this to somebody for a reason. I know that the Lord just gave me this in in the moment for a reason. So I would go into a people's house, and then the spirit that was the principality over that household would manifest in one of the family members. Sometimes that spirit would make one of the family members very angry because it didn't want me to come into the house and to clean up what's going on. Somebody said strong man. Yeah. So I would come in and the person that was holding the strong man demon that was keeping the whole family in oppression would start to act up and, and start to act really crazy. And sometimes you would think they were in the flesh, but it was actually a spirit that was uh, activated in there. Remember, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 that the battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against spiritual rulers, powers uh, up in wicked places, powers, dominions, all that stuff. So I was coming against the strong man and a person in the household. So when I go in households, I would always be able to tell where that principality, where that strong man was and who it was in that was controlling all of it. So when I would go in a house and I would see that strong man, I would see that person that was activated. It made dealing with the rest of the family a lot easier. You deal with the strong man, that the, the, the person that is holding it, then what will happen is you'll get into the rest of the family a whole lot easier. Man, this is good. I got Keegan sitting over here. This is good revelation, Keegan. Yeah, so so... It's, it's awesome. See, Keegan's my audience today. And you guys, too. Uh, you're listening. I'm training and equipping you. But, man, that's crazy, man, that I just remembered that. Going into the house. It's been so long. <laughs> it's been so long since I've been in um, house calls and stuff. But I would notice that when I would go in house calls, I would come against a strong man, and they put up a fight. My goodness, they would put up a fight. Because, remember, those spirits don't want to release. Um, they don't want to release the stronghold. They don't want to leave the stronghold that they have built. They're also comfortable there. They know if they get cast out, they're going to go uh, out into dry places and things of that nature. Hold on, guys. Let me, let me fix something. Okay. And things of that nature. So, um, yeah, stubborn demons don't want to go. And I have some places in the Bible that I actually want to talk about. Before we jump into the word, though, make sure that you guys like and share. Like and share. And I also pray that the grace of God will come up on your life for you guys to get into people's households and cause household revivals and cause people's lives to be changed and transformed for the glory of God. I pray that that household revival grace will come up on you so that you can set people free, set families free. In Jesus' name. Um, One of the first places we see where the disciples dealt with a stubborn demon. 
And I'm going to give you a little bit of revelation why they weren't able to cast it out and stuff like that as we read is in uh, Matthew 17, and we will start with verse 14. It says, and when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless. Here's the keys right here to why they were having so much trouble casting out this demon. O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. It came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus and probably, uh, privately said, privately and said, why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. So, one of the reasons people struggle a lot with sh these, these stubborn demons at the, at the core of it is exactly what we see right here in the Bible, unbelief. You know, a lot of times, guys, we have um, a lot of areas of our life that are carrying unbelief. And when we start dealing with the demonic in people, remember, demons can tell what you're carrying and they can tell if you usually they can tell if you really have faith in what you're saying just by hearing the disposition of your spirit. Remember demons are spirit so they recognize spirit and I'm going to get more into that as we go on but I'm just giving you little nuggets here so you'll stay on and uh, continue to listen. Remember if you're just tuning in make sure you like and share. For assuredly I say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed if you guys don't know what a mustard seed is it's a very little grain grainy looking seed and the thing is, is if you plant a mustard seed, it gets all over the place. It literally takes over. So all you need is the faith of a mustard seed. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Jesus was saying, if you even have this little bit of faith, remember Hebrews eleven six tells us that God is pleased by faith. That is, faith is the currency of heaven. If you want to get something out of heaven's deposit box, use faith, all right? So faith is the currency of heaven, and God honors faith. So if faith is in action and not, and not your flesh, what will happen with faith is it will grow and it will cause anything that you are facing, any mountain that is in your way, to be moved out of the way. Now, you have a part here that says, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. The reason he said prayer and fasting and this kind was because he was saying, you guys need to pray and fast to get revelation of who I am and get revelation of what is on the inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so you can have the faith that I have to cast this demon out. Remember, the disciples had been casting out demons. They just came across something that was giving them a hard fight. And I know if I ask many of you on here, uh, I'll probably find out that you guys have came across demonic things that have actually probably given you a fight at some times. And you've been like, why can't I cast it out? Why won't this thing leave? I don't understand. You know, um, this is crazy. Like I've been casting out demons for so long. Now I've come across something and I just don't get it. And I'm going to hit on a few of these things. And I'm also going to give you reasons why sometimes it might actually not be a demon that you're fighting, but it actually might be an altar in a person that you are thinking is a demon that needs to be actually brought back into the person to be made whole. So that's a whole nother conversation. Sometimes people will fight and fight and fight with something and they actually need revelation that it's not a demon that they're fighting. It is actually a altar, which is, is not going to be cast out. It actually needs to be brought back in so the person can be brought into wholeness. All right, guys, before I continue on, I just want to tell you guys, uh, especially you guys on YouTube, make sure that you continue to like the video. I want to get these views up. I know that we can. We're going to push this out into the algorithm and let more people hear this teaching. I believe it's going to be very, very edifying for the body of Christ. So if you're watching this and you have not done so, or you're just tuning in, make sure, or you're watching in the future, make sure that you're smashing that like button. Okay, so we see that the disciples were actually having a fight with this demon. They couldn't cast it out because they were lacking faith. They, they didn't even realize uh, who they were walking with at the time. They had a little bit of an idea, but you know, the Holy Spirit had came within them yet. It was just upon them through the authority that Jesus had given them, or they haven't gotten revelation of actually, you know, what Jesus was about to do at the cross. So 
Jesus said, I have given you power and authority. I've given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions. All right. But they came into a moment where they um, couldn't deal with it. They couldn't deal with it. And like I said, some of you guys have probably been in situations where you've been coming against demonic things and they haven't left. But we will dialogue into this more. Uh, another place where we see uh, a stubborn demon, and I'm not going to read this whole verse, but uh, Luke 8, 26 to 35 talks about where Jesus cast out legion. He came against legion. Now, Jesus actually, being the son of God, being God himself, told legion to leave. If you read this, told legion to leave, but legion actually did not listen to the very first command. And so Jesus said, okay, you're not leaving. What is your name? What is your name? And he says, my name is Legion, for we are many. So there were many demons on the inside of that man that started to communicate in one voice to Jesus Christ. Okay? And then we see after that, Jesus cast him into a herd of pigs. But he put up a little bit of a fight because he did not want to be cast out. He knew, he knew where he would go. So he made a deal to go into the pigs, and then the pigs ran off the cliff. So we see even right there that Jesus came against a demon that did not go out at the first uh authoritative direction. All right. So we're going to come against things sometimes. And sometimes we have to fight, be long suffering. Sometimes it does take time. We have to, we have to use that word of knowledge. We have to get, uh, we have to let the prophetic start to flow in so that we can have the keys to unlock the areas that need to be unlocked. Uh, another example of stubborn demons would be actually with the seven sons of Sceva. Now I'm going to write, read this and I'm going to give you some revelation from it. Acts 19 13 to 17 says this, Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name, call the name, listen, of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. So from right here, we see that this is something they were doing, okay? Saying we exercise or we cast you out by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So just by them saying that to what I believe would be lower ranking demons, just the name of Jesus had enough authority even with them to cast out some some evil spirits, some demons. But here's what happened, though. They came across somebody that gave them a fight. Um, also, there were seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priests who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? So even Paul was known in heaven and hell, right? Like you should want to be known in heaven and in hell. Uh, then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against him, so that they fled out that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And in the name of the Lord, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So even a demon that was beating them, up, that beat them up, they got glory. <laughs> they got glory out of that. It's pretty wild. So, so we see right here that the Jewish Jewish exorcists came up against something that they weren't ready to take on, okay? They came up against this thing. Listen, here's the truth. There is other, in other religions, they, they actually have the practice. Like you see there's some Muslims, there's some, uh, I think there's some Hindus and some other people that ever actually, e even witches, man, have this uh, thing of making deals with demons and casting them out of land and doing all this stuff. So it, to, to an extent, which it's false, it's not real. The demon will give them the idea that they're actually casting them out. So they puts on a false show to make it look like that these other religions have authority because the, the devil is deceptive. And really, they're not really being cast out. Okay, so they're not really being cast out. So we do see that there is other religions that practice the casting out of demonic spirits, but they're really not casting them out. And the result is not the result of if a Christian that has full faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, is casting them out. When a Christian has cast a demon out, <laughs> trust me, the demon acts a whole lot different. And when it leaves the person, there is a result that even heaven can celebrate. Okay? And everybody will know that the demon is gone because that person's life will be completely changed. All right? And they will give glory to God. Amen. So there, there's, that's just a few examples where they came up against stubborn demons uh, and, and things of that nature. Listen, I'm, I'm going to go into some detail now to why people come up against demons and they put up a fight, okay? But let me go ahead and uh, give you an understanding of some of this. Remember, smash that like button, guys. Um, 
demons recognize authority and they can see the light that you carry. Remember that word light, okay? What fellowship does darkness have with light? Light is actually a very strong term in the kingdom of God. Usually, sometimes when I'm casting out demons, I'll say light be, or I'll say more light. What if I told you the more that light is shining, the greater your authority is recognized? Let me explain, okay? Remember, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So the more we walk, here's a key. Here's a key to the shining of the light of Christ in your life. Now, I'm not talking about in a works sense, but in a sense of your love of God and you being obedient to him. Watch what I'm about to say. Now, this is all of these notes are from me, guys. I didn't pick them up anywhere else and, and from the Bible, obviously, ultimately. But this is straight revelation that I'm giving you from me concerning this subject. OK, the more we walk in purity, somebody say purity and holiness, somebody say holiness, which means the character of God, the brighter our light shines. So I'm going to say that again for you guys, okay? Listen, the more we walk in purity and holiness, the, which is the character of God, the brighter our light shines. Did you know your light actually gets dimmer when you participate in immorality, when you participate in the things of the world, meaning you go into sin and things of that nature, you actually dim the light in your life. And then no longer does the kingdom of darkness recognize you as a threat. They actually recognize you as somebody that they, that, that, that they can attack. So purity and holiness is the way that that light shines bright. And who is the creator of purity and holiness? Jesus. He coming for a pure and spotless bride, one that he has cleaned up. He's coming for a, per, a bride that walks in his character, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit found in Galatians 5. Okay, so we walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Our light will shine brighter. How do you walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit? By faith and being led, knowing that we're being led by the Spirit of God and being obedient to his voice. You can hear his voice. So demons recognize how bright that light is shining. Amen. Demons need to see Jesus when they see us. Demons need to see Jesus when they see us. Now, let me give you a, well, let me read the rest of this and let me give you an example. <clears throat> the same light that was in Christ on earth is in us by the same Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead. Romans 8, 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Do you ever see when demons are coming out of people's life, they'll come up to a man or a woman of God and they'll say, ah, Man of God, Daniel, why are you here? Why are you come to mess us up? I went to the Bahamas one time and a woman manifested. Ah, what is Daniel? Why are you here, Daniel? You know, that's because demons see me and my name is attached to Jesus's name. So my name and Jesus's name are like this. We are in union. We are one. I am one with Christ. I am not Jesus Christ, but I carry his mantle. I am an ambassador. I am sent by him. I have the seal of approval by the Holy Spirit. So when demons see me come on the scene by the glory of God and by his grace, they recognize that I have been sent by the kingdom of light to, di to, it, to distinguish, I mean, to uh, not extinguish, to extinguish the kingdom of darkness. So they see that same light within me, and they recognize it, and they go, oh, no, there is Daniel Adams who is attached to Jesus Christ, the one who created us, and, and we have been kicked out of heaven, or we have been, um, we, 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 we do not have the redemptive qualities that this man of God has, or whatever, you know? 
be it if it's the spirit of the Nephilim or whatever it may be, however you believe it. So they see that, they see that light, they see the light of the creator, the one who created them, and they go, oh man. And in their mind, they're going, is it is time's up? Because remember, even the demons and the devil himself do not know the day or the hour. They do not know when their time is up. So anytime demons see that light, they go, it's the end. Are you I'm teaching right now, guys. You need to be liking and sharing. Listen, they see that light and they go, oh, it's done. That's why they put up such a fight because they think that their time is up. They're like, it's up. It's done. It must be that time because I see that light. It's over. But then they find out, oh, it, it's, it's not what we thought, but we're getting cast out anyway. You see? So anytime, anytime they see the light, they think their time is up because they are shrouded in darkness they 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 do not man they do not live in light so when true light shows up they throw a fit okay i'm telling you what this all has to do with stubborn demons so i'm 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 giving you a good foundation and identity before i go into talking more on the stubbornness part okay um if that holy spirit jesus's spirit is within us then we must be seated also where jesus is at Meaning the powers of darkness are under our feet. Guys, I'm building your faith right now so that you won't have to fight stubborn de demons so much, okay? Ephesians 2, 6 lets us know, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And if we go backwards to Ephesians 1 to 20, watch this, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Watch this. Here's your key. This is what you need to know when you're in Christ. Far above all principality all and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be hid over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So the Holy Spirit is in you. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And you also see if you're seated with him, then you're also a son. You have the same inheritance. And part of that inheritance is you are above the devil. You are above the principalities, powers, and dominions in Christ. So when you come up against demonic forces, these are verses in scriptures, including Psalms 91, that you can actually use to counter the demon's arguments. You're not stronger than me. Well, I, I, I want to tell you in Ephesians 1, 20 to 23, it actually tells me that I'm above you. And if, if I didn't know any better, I would say that the word is greater than you. And it says that he is the way, the truth, the life, John 14, 6. So if I've said something that is written in his word, then I must have authority over you. Come out of that person in Jesus' name. So that's why it's important to know the word because, listen, the word is your offensive weapon when you come up against any demonic force. And one of the things demons will always check you on, they'll check and see if you know and believe in what you've come with. So they might say things. They might tell you something. They might use your past against you. Oh, I see you used to be a drug addict. Oh, you were just uh, down the road a couple months ago doing this and doing that. They might check you on stuff to see if you're going to be shaken in your identity. That's what stubborn demons do. They're going to fight you. They're going to try to fight you and so that they don't have to come out and make you be full of doubt and unbelief and, and make you think, hey, I'm no good. I'm nothing. That's their job is to dismantle you, to give, fill you full of doubt. Okay? And if you haven't conquered the identity issues in your life, you can't come up against demonic forces and people that will tell you and bring up the wounds and traumas. Look, we talk about trauma all the time. Let me tell you something. If you are going to deal with the demonic realm, you have to get your traumas healed, guys, or you're going to be an offended person, and the devil is going to eat your lunch every single day. If you live in that realm of self-pity, self-pity is the super glue to hell. If you live in that realm of self-pity, guess what? The devil will eat your lunch every day. One of the things I've seen with Christians is they don't like their, their traumas to be healed. Uh, many do, but a lot I've seen, 
They want to hold on to their offenses and stuff, their self-righteousness, and then they want to continue to cast out demons. And they come up against demonic forces and they wonder why it won't go out. Well, if you're walking in self-righteousness, if you're walking in offense, you're walking in the character of the devil. You're not walking in the character of God because the devil is offended more than anybody. He wants he, His whole character is offense. I mean, he got kicked out of heaven. He know he can't go back. His life's a living hell, literally. So he wants to make your life a living hell. So get make sure, guys, as you're bring, getting a foundation, okay, a foundation in Christ, you keep yourself free from offense, all right? That bait of Satan. Stay free from offense so that Satan can't have his way in your life. Now, listen, knowing these tr truths is what I call, this is a word y'all need to write down, positional authority. So knowing these identity truths is called positional authority. And somebody said it, we're more than conquerors. We're not victims, we are victorious, okay? Knowing these Knowing these truths is called positional authority. The demons know if you know that you outrank them. Catch this now. And they also know by seeing you by the spirit of you, if, if, by the spirit, if you are working with them. Ah, come on now. Let me say this again. I wrote this down, by the way. Okay, listen. When I was, before I come on this, broad, uh, this broadcast, Knowing these truths is called positional authority. The demons know if you know that you outrank them. And they also know by seeing you by the Spirit if you are working with them. Now, why would I say if you are working with them? You're coming to cast them out, but behind the scenes, you're fornicating. You're uh, doing, doing drugs. You're... Uh, you know, you're cussing, you're beating your spouse, you're doing all these things. You're actually doing the things that the kingdom of darkness is doing. Huh? They know this. They can see it in the disposition of your face. We talk about uh, the we talk about the spirit of discernment. Like if I, Daniel Adams, by the Holy Spirit, can look at somebody and I can discern the spirit they're coming in. What do you think demons can do? Demons are from ancient. They're from, they're from a time past, right? They've been watching your whole family. I think they can discern the flesh pretty well. So they can see if, like somebody said just now, if you have secrets in the bag and they can call your secrets out and shame you, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. They'll be like, hold on. You want to cast me out, but you like us but you want to cast us out. I'm telling you, I've seen it. Even in the past, I'm being transparent with you guys. When I went through a backslidden season in my life, I thought I was going to go and keep casting out demons. The demons would show up and be like, "Who? what do you think you're going to do? We got you. And of course, you come to godly sorrow, you repent, and you come back greater, and they get madder because you made it back. But I'm just letting you guys know you don't have to take that path. You don't have to take that path. You can stay transparent. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you a little bit more about that. Okay. Remember demons. All right. Good revelation. You guys better be writing this stuff down. If not, come back and get the information, share this with a friend. All right. Like the video guys, you help me out and you help out the algorithm when you like the video and you continue to comment. Okay. If you're with me guys, and you're enjoying this teaching right now, can you put a one in the chat? Let me know that you're liking the teaching and I'll continue on. Let me know that you're liking the teaching, and I will continue on. In Jesus' name. Because <laughs> I'm going to drop some more nuggets of wisdom here. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, we're pushing. Come on. Come on. Awesome. Awesome. I just want to make sure you guys are tracking, tracking with me. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, all right. Let's continue. Remember, guys, demons are seeing into two realms. We're three-dimensional beings. They're not, okay? Demons are seeing into two realms, so they also see your spiritual disposition. If they see darkness in an area of your life, they take advantage of it. This is why we want to be walking. Here's the key, guys. 
in full transparency so the enemy has no access point of attack. Listen, now I'm going to say something, and I'm not here to call anybody out or point fingers, okay? But some of you guys are going to hear what I'm about to say, but I have to say it because I got to nullify something that I've heard taught so that you guys don't get yourself in trouble. There's no such thing as your secrets having secrets. There's no such thing as your secrets having secrets. If you are in a marriage and your husband and wife do not know the story of your life, something is wrong and the devil will eventually use that against you. I have seen fighting in marriages because there are secrets that are hitting, and that's why intimacy and transparency uh, lacks in a marriage. My wife knows everything about me. She can ask me anything, and I will tell her anything. I know everything about her, she, and I can ask her anything, okay? That is my flesh. We are one flesh. We are one flesh. You understand? If we're one flesh in Christ, we know each other. We know each other intimately, okay? Your secrets should never have secrets. I don't care what culture you come from. I don't care who you are. The kingdom of God, if you want to cast out demons, you want to be able to get rid of those stubborn demons, you want to be able to uh, take care of the problems in front of you, live vulnerable and transparent before the Lord and before those who love you, all right? Because if not, like somebody said, what is done in the dark will be revealed in the light. And if you got to hide it, you, why, then something's wrong, okay? Some people say trans, uh, transparency is not good. No, transparency is a beautiful thing. Jesus was actually so transparent that he hung naked on a cross and hid nothing from mankind, if Jesus hung naked on a cross and was beaten and bruised beyond any man, what right do you have to hide anything? If you have something to hide, then <laughs> I know that the devil must abide, okay? I don't care if you're a preacher or leader. I don't care who you are. I'm not here for you to like me. You can make exposed videos on me. It doesn't matter. I'm going to sit here and spit this truth and, and, and all get out. There's nothing to hide in Christ. If you want to truly cast out demons, you want to truly um, deal with stuff that, that needs to be dealt with, live in transparency, because the devil knows if you're not living in transparency, okay? So this is why we want to be walking in full transparency so the enemy has no access point of attack. And I'll say this too, wives, would you really want to be married to a man that you didn't know the secrets of his life? Husbands, would you really want to be married to a woman that you don't know the secrets of her life? Now, I'm not saying you got to go and hurt yourself, but you should be able to ask what you want to ask because that's your flesh, all right? That's your flesh. Ask what you want to ask. Amen? Full transparency. I don't hide things from my wife. My wife knows everything. I don't even hide things from the people that are with me in ministry. Like, I'm full on out there, guys, because I don't want them to be that way. I want to raise up people who live in transparency. Okay, does that mean you tell everybody that's around you? No, you got to be smart, use discernment, tell people who love you, okay? And when it's become a testimony, share it with everybody. Amen. Once, once it's history, <laughs> then make it a testimony for Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so let me, let me uh, go ahead and move past this and keep going. Um, make sure you mean business, the Father's business, when attacking the enemy. Spiritual warfare is a real thing. And when you do deliverance, the devil knows he has to fight back to try and hold on. He is the most stubborn demonic power of all. He is the creator of that stuff, of that demonic mess. Okay? He's, he causes mess. He's a big mess. All right? So the devil's going to put up a fight when you come against his kingdom. He's, you, think, you think the demons are going to let go easy? No, they're going to put up a fight. That's why they hit the ground scream. That's why they say they're not going to go and all this stuff. And I'll, I'll tell you guys this too. A lot of the stuff you see on the internet today, even some of my stuff, even in the past, I had to go back and get rid of some videos and stuff. 
because everything is not a demon that you see. Some of it is is trauma wounds that are manifesting. Some of it is uh, healing that is taking place. We start seeing tears. We start seeing screaming, and we don't realize the fire of God is burning and pruning things out of people, healing wounds. It's like when you take a sword, uh, a knife, and you put fire on it, and you put the fire on the wound so it can become a scar, meaning you, you cauter- cauterize it. You make it where it won't bleed anymore. What is a person going to do? They are going to scream, okay? So a lot of the stuff we see is is that we see altars. Now I'm not talking about an altar, altar that you put on, you know, like an altar that you, you know, put demonic stuff on. I'm talking about an alter ego. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, alter ego. Whereas some per, a person has uh, disassociated from themselves and they've spread themselves out, and there's a whole nother personality that shows up. And sometimes what will happen is. Um, when the Holy Spirit comes, when the anointing comes, when the presence of God starts coming around people and the power starts touching them, that altar will show up too because the Holy Spirit wants to make them whole, okay? So there's times that I'm in deliverance and I'm doing one-on-ones with people in my revival and the revivals God has given me and I'll put them over to a forerunner that I know understands how to bring the altars back into that person, okay? But watch this. Sometimes, sometimes, the altar, once it comes back in, there was a demon hiding behind the altar. Look, this stuff can get really deep, okay? I'm, I'm not here to teach you on altars. I'm just trying to teach you about, I give you kind of an understanding. Some of the stubborn stuff that you're coming against is actually um, altars or trauma points. Or We even have people in deliverance when the Holy Spirit is ministering to somebody. You got to have discernment. They'll go and try to cast a demon out just because they see a tear or they see some snot. But it's just the Holy Spirit working on them healing something. So you don't want to just run up and try to cast a demon out or make a demon be there that's not there. So you want to have discernment on this so that we don't hurt people and we don't cause things to happen um, that should be, you know, cause extra trauma or cause extra, extra wounding. Like they're, they're, they're enjoying the Holy Spirit. Now they're confused. Now they have a spirit of confusion because somebody came over there and started to pray a demon off and it was never a demon. <laughs> I even see people, they'll be in a meeting, people start laughing. And just because they start laughing because the joy of the Lord on them, they think it's a Jezebel spirit. I'm like, come on, guys. You got to have discernment. You got to have discernment. So things can get messy sometimes. <sighs> but anyway, I want things to be healthy. That's why I'm teaching on this. But let's talk about what, what to do when you run into a stubborn demon. We have some more people that have just jumped on. Guys, we're over 500 on YouTube. We're over 400 on Facebook. Praise God. We've almost hit 1,000 live. Let's continue to like this. Let's continue to share. It's a good topic, and I know people are being encouraged. Um, when you come across stubborn demons, now I've, I've given you the layout of all the stuff around it, okay? So I give you guys a lot of extra teaching of things to look for. I've given you a foundation of your identity. I've told you use scripture to combat all demonic forces, okay? You need to more, know more than just Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. You need to know actually the word. If you know more of the word, you bring more of the word to the fight, you're going to win the battle a lot quicker, okay? You notice this 40 days, 40 nights in the desert, right? Jesus in the wilderness. Satan comes. He tempts him. Jesus uses the word against him, all right? G- the big, biggest battle right there to try to stop Jesus from going to the cross. He, he was the word, but he also used the scriptures to combat the enemy. So the scriptures are very important when you're dealing with stubborn demons. Now I'm talking about demons. All right. I'm talking about demons. Amen. So when you come across stubborn demons, you have to know the word or you're going to be in a fight and that fight is going to wear you out. If you've ever been in a deliverance session and you feel like you are getting drained that means the enemy has the upper hand, meaning it almost puts you to sleep. You guys have ever been in deliverance and you notice that you're getting real tired? Look, that's happened to me. It means that the devil is deceiving you and making you uh, run in circles around it, okay? Or you could actually be dealing with somebody that is sent as a demonic assignment. Now listen to this, to keep you busy while the enemy comes around in another area and hits, hits an area of vulnerability that you don't know about. I've seen that too. I've seen that too. The enemy will bring a deliverance session that will keep you going for weeks and months on end, and you don't have the discernment to see that it's a total uh, uh, setup, a total assignment right there, and you've totally wasted your life and your time. 
and now the enemy's in, in your backyard doing some crazy stuff. So you want to make sure that you're using discernment in every session, and if you're in a session, a deliverance session, and the demon is fighting you, fighting you, and you're getting tired, it means you no longer have the upper hand. Because remember, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's life. There's life and life more abundantly, and you will be strengthened because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You should never become exhausted and tired in the midst of casting out a demon. You should be strengthened by his grace. When you are weak, he becomes strong. When you are weak, he becomes strong. It is in your moments of weakness that you should be strengthened and ready. That's why some people say before you go into a deliver deliverance session, pray and fast. And I think they're saying that because they want you to be strengthened. They want you to be ready. But in my case, I have to be ready all the time because of the type of life I live. Okay. But if you're in deliverance sessions, guys, if you're in deliverance sessions, don't let the enemy get the upper hand and don't let him wear you out. If you're getting wore out, take a breath, stand up, say, hold on, what's going on? Check the scene and say, hey, you ain't wasting my time, you dirty little serpent. I know what you're doing. You think you're going to control this. And then get the person back and find out if they're really there and they really mean business and find out, first of all, if they even understand the gospel. So one of the first things you want to do if you're dealing with a person and the demon is not coming out, stop the session and find out, find out if they even understand the gospel. I've seen so many people come into deliverance sessions and they do not even understand the gospel. They don't understand the fullness of what God has done on the cross through Jesus Christ. They're so much under condemnation. They're so much under uh, legalism that they, they, they're working their way out of stuff. You got to make sure that it's not by their works. It's not by your own self-efforts. It's by his grace. It's by what he did on the cross. And it's not about you do this, God's more happy with you. No, God went to the cross through his son and died the death that we deserve. It's no longer about that. We live a life of faith. So we got to make sure people understand living a life of faith. So make sure you instill that in the person first, okay? Also, when you're dealing with stubborn demons, now, this is a situation. Now, let's go to another situation. You're dealing, a, and you got a, I mean, you got a real demon in front of you. You know it. You, the hairs on your arms are standing up. You've seen the eyes roll back in the head. You've almost seen them levitate, and that thing ain't going nowhere. That is a time to stand firm and fight, okay? I've seen uh, deliverances where it's taken days sometimes to get that demon out, meaning you, you got to stand and fight. But see, the discernment is there, and you know that it is a demon. And you're hitting layers. It's doing every tactic it can. It's done this. It's done that. It's talked about your family. It's tried to curse you. It's tried to tell you that you're going to hell, that you're not a real believer. You then said, come out 10 times. That thing ain't going nowhere. You have to stand firm in faith. You have to stand firm in faith so that you can show that high-ranking demonic uh, entity that you know your position. You know your position, and you know that you have a greater authority than they do. In the early days of deliverance, I encountered this a lot as the grace of God has increased on my life. As I have done more, I've had a lot of easier moments. It doesn't mean I still don't come across moments. Look, guys, I don't have the answer to all things, okay? I don't claim that. I don't think that I have the way that of ways and all that. I am also continuing to grow. So you guys take what you can out of this and do with what you want. Do what you want with it, okay? I hope it's helping you. But when you're coming against these things, these demons have done everything they can. If it takes you two, three days, if it takes you a week, if it takes you a month, you have to stand firm and you have to continue to fight. They're stubborn for a reason. And in the midst, watch this, in the midst of your battle. Your faith is increasing. That means when you come across this entity in another place and another person, you will have a greater grace and authority to cast it out quicker the next time because you know the tactics it takes. You know what it's doing. This is why it's so important that we do sessions sometimes. I believe every believer should get in one-on-one -on -one sessions. I believe every believer to some extent should do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people so you can encounter the kingdoms of, kingdom of darkness in different ways and different individuals so that when you come into a mass place or you, a place of many people or you come across multiple people that you can do more damage to the kingdom of darkness because your, your grace and your faith starts to increase the more you encounter these things. That's why you see 
um, men, some men and women of God can get things done a lot quicker sometimes is because they've encountered that situation before. And that's why it's important to be around ministries and be around people that have experience. Like I'm going to straight up say it. You get close to me, you get a part of the supernatural life, you get a part of the forerunners, and I instill into you in teachings that are behind the scenes. I impart into you you're going to be able to bypass a lot of things. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not here to toot my own horn. You guys learn from where you want to. But I'm saying if you become a part of this, you're going to have that grace come up on your life and you're going to notice that demons are going to start to notice and recognize you and come out of people a lot quicker than be it if you tried to do it in your own self-effort. Because that's the testimony of my life. I was a part of ministries that imparted into me. And this is the example that you have before you today. This is biblical. Okay. You go from glory to glory and you can move a lot quicker if we do it in humility and you serve and you plug in. So you guys don't have to go and, and fight certain battles that you are fighting because you'll choose to invest and plug into a man or woman of God that has already broke the ground and went ahead. We, you know, people are forerunners, people are breaking the ground and pioneering. So you don't have to pioneer that same thing. Why do you want to go up and spend the same amount of time and the same amount of effort and energy when you can go get simple wisdom and knowledge and you can break through a lot quicker? I don't understand it. Some people are hard hit it. Some people are scared to invest. Some people are, you know, they want to do it themselves. And some people just live in poverty. So they, 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 they just don't walk in authority. But that's a whole nother teaching. Ah, that's another thing. The Holy Spirit just hit me, hit me on this. Demons. Stubborn demons even recognize if you come with a spirit of poverty, means you come with a spirit of lack, means you come with a spirit of unbelief. That means you're ungrateful. You are not a giving person. Even demons can see that. One of the greatest ways demons can be cast out sometimes is by giving. Giving what? Love, compassion. Even people that sometimes you'll have demon situations, you'll bless them financially. The demon will leave their life. They'll be broken free from poverty and things will change. But that takes discernment. You need a word of knowledge on that. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that sometimes that giving thing can go ahead and change your life. Giving means invest. Giving means believe. Giving means that you can change. You're, you're, you're sowing in something to cause a change. Okay? So so when you're hit, you're coming up against... Uh, stubborn demons. You have to stand firm. You have to fight. Jesus was the example of, Jesus was the greatest example of coming against a, a stubborn demon. He came against the most stubborn devil of them all. And he stood there for 40 days and 40 nights and he fought the good fight. He fought all the way through to come out of that desert in power, to come out of the wilderness in power. Okay. He defeated him. In that, in that moment, and then he defeated him ultimately at the cross, okay? So, stubborn demons can always be beat, but are, do you have the faith to stand and continue to battle? Now, when you, you come across stubborn demons and you're noticing you're not getting any ground, time has passed, you notice you're not getting breakthrough, I'm going to tell you a way you'll get greater grace. You want me to tell you? Pick the phone up and call somebody that does it better than you. That's right. Not, not that somebody is better than you, but they have information, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Call that person, and you want me to tell you what's going to happen? Instead of you being, you know, cock diesel on the devil, you know what, you know, <laughs> that's a country word, by the way. That means you got big muscles on the devil. Um, what's going to happen is your humility in calling for help your humility and calling for help is going to cause that deliverance grace to increase on your life. It's going to cause the authority because if you're prideful, you'll never call for help, which will give you wisdom. If you're humble, you'll call on help, which will cause you to increase in wisdom and discernment. And you will notice that you will be able to handle those stubborn demons a lot better. Now, I want to tell you this too, guys. <clears throat> Here's what the devil loves. Come out right now. You got to go. You got to go. Come up, up and out, up and out, up and out. Go, 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 go. You got to leave. Go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on. Go out, out, out. Right now, Jesus' name. You got to go. Every demon of this. Blah, 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 blah. If I'm doing that, all right, right now, up, out, go, go, go. If I'm doing that, do I really, listen, do I really understand 
the authority that I've been given. If my mouth is running so much, that means that there is a level of unbelief. Listen, guys, let me go ahead and destroy the pink elephant in deliverance. Can I do that? When, you know, the biggest problem people have, a lot of people have with me uh, in deliverance is that I come and I'm eccentric when I'm dealing with demons. Meaning, I say, hey, what are you doing? Come on, man. How long you been there? What are you doing to this person? I bet you were doing it to that person. I'm talking to a whole personality, for goodness sakes. Ah, come on. I'm, I'm, we're, we're talking to a personality. It's no different than talking to a real person. Like if an intruder comes into your house, are you catching intruder? Are you going to sit there and tell the intruder, get out now, go get, got, you got to go, hey, bang, 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 three times, oh, oh, we're going to sell this, da, 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 da. You're going <laughs> to, you, are you going to be the, uh, what, what do they call them things, man? The, uh, you know, what do they mean? Three, three, five, six, 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 same time, blah, blah, three, oh, oh, we got 53 over here. You ain't, no, you're not going to do, <laughs> you're not going to do that. You're not going to be an auctioneer to the devil or to the person that's going to enter into your house and try to steal. Ah, what are you going to do? I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. Hey, you're going to say, hey, you, what are you doing in my house? Let me stand right there. I got something for you in the closet. I'll be right back. You know, that's how you're going to talk. <laughs> that's how you're going to talk, man. Mm -mm -mm. Listen, all that we see in deliverance today of just, I mean, I see some deliverance ministers. I see people who do deliverance. They just sound... They sound like an auctioneer, man. They just, I'm like, nobody, them demons don't, they, they don't even understand you because you don't understand yourself. That is an example of unbelief. Man, you need to go sit back down. You need to go continue to learn. And before you go, or you need to go with somebody to a deliverance session. Remember, you are talking, guys. You are talking to a whole personality. You're talking to a being that used to walk in the flesh at one time on this earth. Talk to them like you got some sense, like you know where you're coming from. Hey, I know who you are. You're from the darkness. You used to be here in this world at one time, and you want to have flesh again, don't you? You ain't going to get this flesh. Now listen, who sent you? Ah, the devil. I'm from the devil. I'm from hell. Ah, you know, whatever. Okay, how long you been there? You've been there a long time? Yes. And some people, watch this. This is the thing. I'm going to kill this too. Listen, some people will say, just cast it out. Man, let me tell you something. If you cast it out like that, teach me. Some people say, don't talk to them demons. Don't do this. I, uh, okay, so, so you got the formula. You got the key to just go, come out in Jesus' name to every single demon you deal with. Well, God, well glory to God. Glory to God. Because I'll guarantee you, after you do your one thing and the demon fakes that it leaves and that person really doesn't get the deliverance that it need that that they need, I, I, I'll go and bring that person back up and I'll be like, all right, come on. I know I know you never left. You just tricked that person, made them think you left. So that's what they do sometimes. Remember, demons don't want to go. Demons don't want to go. But when you're dealing with stubborn demons, you will sometimes get into a verbal communication with them. Are you just going to keep screaming cast out and that thing laughs at, laughs at you and eventually smacks you upside your head and you go out crying like the seven sons of Sceva because he can see through your unbelief? Or are you going to stand firm and you're going to be like, let me tell you who sent me. Let me tell you where I'm from. I'm not from this earth either. I'm actually from heaven because that's where I'm seated right now. And I'm here to let you know your time is up. You're going to let this person go. You're going to let their family go. It's over. And you hear the confidence in my voice. Demons recognize not your yelling, not your come out, come out, come out. They recognize the authority in your voice. Hey, who are you? How dare you put your hands on that girl? How dare you touch that man? How dare you live in that temple? I know it must be pretty bright for you because that person's a believer, right? Yes, they believe. They pray all the time. Good. Then why are you there? Your time is up. You got to leave. So one of the biggest things demons recognize is your authority, which means you have a firm identity. So they recognize if you understand your identity. Guys, on YouTube, we have over 500 viewing. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button.
You guys are on Facebook. Share, 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 share. If you guys have been blessed so far, let's get some grace in the chat. Can you put a five in the chat if you've been blessed so far? You guys watching in the future, if you've been blessed so far, put a five in the comment section. So, and you know, when you walk in confidence, when you walk in authority, demons know that you mean business, okay? Demons know that you mean business. Don't ever, in a, in a deliverance session, look, sometimes you guys probably have seen uh, videos of me where demons try me, meaning they'll pull up on me. They'll be like, hey, I don't care if you're four foot eight woman and a demon pulls up on you like, hey, you stand firm. You put your feet in the ground and you say, I ain't moving. I ain't going nowhere because he who is in me is much greater than who is standing before me right now. Put your feet in the ground. Put your feet in the ground and don't move. Some people are like, well, what if the demon hits me? Listen, you have a shield and a barrier. They're called angels. Call them forth. I command right now by the power and authority of Jesus, Jesus Christ because the Holy Spirit, the one that commands angels, is on the inside of me. I need fiery angels to encamp around me right now. Try to touch me now then, demon. So, and then you see the demon go, ah it burns, it burns, and all this stuff. Use the weapons of warfare. Angels are standing there waiting to be commissioned and utilized on your behalf as a believer. That is part of your tool belt, believe it or not. Some people will say you can't, uh, you can't talk to demon, uh, angels. You can't, you, you know, who are you to command angels? Well, let me, let me help you guys. Who lives on the inside of you? The Holy Spirit. Now, the flesh Daniel can command no angel. But the anointed Daniel with the Holy Spirit, I can say, hey, hey, angel, we're here. To, hey, we're here to do this thing in the name of Jesus Christ. I need some help casting this thing out. You know, they're there. They're waiting. They're sent to help the, the, the us who are heirs of salvation. They, they're ministers sent to help us. Those spirits are ministers here to help us that, that are heirs of salvation. Okay, so the angelic help that is around you, like people, you know, some of these weirdo ministries out here that, 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 that think they know everything. They're like, how did Daniel, you, you remember that video, it was a video I did with a girl in the UK, that stubborn demon won't go nowhere. I stood there with that thing for like four minutes and I got fed up in my spirit. I mean, fed up. And I said, Lord, send an angel to get this thing. And the angel smacked her so hard, she fell to the ground like, Boom. I know who that I saw. I saw that girl the last time I was in the UK. I believe she's a forerunner, too. So now she's in the ministry. So you can say what you want to say. But what is the fruit and what is the result of what happened when the angelic help came? Angels are there to help you. All right. They're there to help you. There's nothing wrong with utilizing the angelic help in the name of Jesus Christ for the cause of Christ to win souls and to get people free, set the captives free. And uh, things like that. Okay. Now we don't worship angels. We don't just go and we just, you know, float around with them and hold their hand and walk around. Whatever what we do, they're they're sent to for a purpose. They're sent for uh, an assignment. So angels are here for an assignment. You got to know what their assignment is. You got to know what they're here to do. There's angels over every church. If the church has been commissioned, every church has angels. All that stuff. So when you go into churches, you got you can recognize an angel of the church. Remember to the angel of uh, of of the church of. Uh, was it Laodicea? No, uh, the Church of Thyatira. All them churches, they had angels over them, okay? So every church has an angel. People have angels assigned to them also. Now, some of you would say, what does this have to do with casting out stubborn demons? Casting out stubborn demons becomes easier when you understand the angelic. And in the future, I'm going to do a school of angels so you guys can have an understanding of that if you're a forerunner. So that'll be a blessing for you guys if you decide to become a forerunner, but um, use the angelic help that you have. How do you know that you have angelic help? The spirit of the Lord, discernment, him speaking to you, understanding his voice. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, Daniel, you, or he'll say to anybody, he'll be like, uh, Daniel, you have this angel with you that I've sent with, uh, sent to you. Do you know that they're right there? I'm going to open your eyes. Boom. Oh, okay. He's right there. Let me use, let me utilize that. And you can hear it during deliverance sessions, you see it, actually. 
You see the manifestation of what has been seen and what has been sent. All right, demon, you don't want to leave? I got some angels here that are really ready to help me out. Angels torment that demon. Ah, they start, the demon will start to freak out and start to go crazy. Okay, when you're dealing with stubborn demons also, interrogation is a must sometimes, meaning getting information. It's like they're prisoners of war. They're bound, right? When you interrogate a demon and when they give information, they become powerless. They lose their power because information is power. The reason most demons are able to hold on so long is because they have power over a person through information that they've got about the person. And demons, if they're really caught under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, what will happen is they become a captive themselves and they have to give information. They have to tell the truth. And when they tell the truth, now they might try to kick around a little bit and try to not tell the truth, but if you get the truth out of them, then what happens is they're losing ground, they're losing power, and you'll notice that they actually, actually get, get sent out a lot easier versus somebody that just believes all they can do is say, come out in Jesus' name, all right, and do it like an auctioneer. So anyway, getting information is not a bad thing. Interrogation is not a bad thing. Sometimes you have to do the interrogation thing. You have to do the interrogation thing to get rid of those stubborn demons. Also, guys, if you're just tuning in, once again, like and share. I keep saying this, guys, because there's new people that's always coming in. Make sure you hit that like button uh, as you're watching because it helps out. All right. So I want to make sure that I've hit on uh, a lot of the good areas. Now, let's talk about uh, fasting and prayer when it comes to stubborn demons. Sometimes you'll be in a situation and the Lord might lead you and your heart to go fast and pray. The reason he does that is because you're fighting in the carnal. You're fighting carnally, and he wants you to subdue your flesh so that the spirit can lead more and you can actually hear. Remember, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes people will be there. They, they have pride in the way. They have uh, their ego. They're, they got this information. They're doing a method, and the Lord is like, I don't want to do this method. I want to do that method. So the, and then next thing you know, the Holy Spirit will say, hey, you need to go and fast and pray so that I can get your attention because I don't have your attention in this session. Actually, the demon is running you in circles because you, you're so stuck on this method or you're so stuck in your ways that I can't even speak to you. So put this person to the side and go over here and let's, let, let's do some fasting and prayer for a day where you seek me in the prayer closet so you can get information on how to set this person free, okay? So the reason for fasting and praying is to kill our ego. And, and allows the Holy Spirit to have his way and to give us information and to help us to be obedient and to help us uh, have it a lot easier when it comes to these deliverance sessions, okay? Um, now let's talk about some types of demons, okay? I want to talk to you guys about some types of demons that are stubborn. I've given you guys so much information, so you're definitely going to have to do a whole class thing on this, but I'll talk uh, a little bit, a little bit, uh, about some types, okay? So some types of demon. Let's talk about Leviathan. So what is what is what is big about Leviathan? He's a shipwrecking spirit. He's a marriage destroying spirit. He's a ministry destroying spirit. He's a twisting spirit. He twists things in people's minds. He has other spirits that guard him, which means the scales. So the scales of Leviathan. There's been times uh, when I come against the spirit. I actually have to use the armor of God because, listen, Leviathan's counterfeit is the false armor. So actually, Leviathan has armor, okay? Leviathan has a helmet. Leviathan has a shield, all right? Leviathan has shoes. So you, sometimes when you come against Leviathan, you say, I remove the helmet now so that I can get to this person's mind. I remove the breastplate of unrighteousness so they can know their righteousness. I take that belt of lies off of them so that they can know the truth that the gospel brings them. I take them cement boots off their feet so their feet can carry the gospel of peace. I remove that beat up, that beat up shield that that person is carrying that you allowing the fiery darts to penetrate. I remove that thing. I remove that, 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 that dull sword that has no true power that's causing the person to do nothing but have blunt hits against people. I remove that now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ so they can go on the offensive against the enemy. Remember, Leviathan has armor and he has scales. Okay, the armor is the false 
part of uh, the armor of God, okay? And then the scales are other demons that are with him, be it lust or be it bitterness or anger or rage or whatever it may be, you know? So you'll notice sometimes when you're dealing with these spirits that other multiple spirits will start to show up when you're dealing with Leviathan. Um, <clears throat> sometimes when you're dealing with a, uh, uh, a Jezebel or a spirit of seduction in the person, I want to just stop real quick. I, I saw somebody in the comment section said they want to be a forerunner, but they can't afford Email Maria, maria at the supernaturallife.org. We don't want to stop anybody from being involved in the ministry, and uh, we'll help you out, okay? If we, we don't want anything like that to stop you from being a part. Just tell her your situation, and uh, we'll help you out, all right? So when you're dealing with uh, seducing, uh, seducing spirits, uh, they fight. They try to seduce you in the midst of it, all right? They'll try to make you believe a lie. All right. If you've ever come, watch, if you've ever come up against that Baal or Jezebelic spirit, what it likes to do is it likes to make you believe that it's gone. It'll, it'll act like it's the person sometimes. It'll be like, oh, I'm okay. Or it'll say something like, oh, I'm getting really tired. I think we might should stop. And if you, if you have this big mercy gift, you start to feel bad for the person. Oh, yeah, well, you, you should go home, and next thing you know, watch this. This is why you got to be keen on this. Listen, you got to be keen on this, all right? All right, listen to me now. Don't have mercy for no demon. I see too many times. I've seen pastors hug seducing spirits because they have too much mercy. No offense, pastors. Have, listen, though, have no mercy for no demon. Demons don't get mercy. Humans do. Demons don't. So when you see the demon, watch, I had one time, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a demon that came on a stage, and it brought her husband on stage too. I'm, I'm, I, you guys can find it in the video. And the husband's looking at me. The demon's screaming at me, right? The husband looks at me and says, don't do nothing to my wife. Don't embarrass. I said, hold on, buddy. Your wife's up here manifesting a whole demon, and you're up here with her. I said, if you want to take her home with this spirit, you take her home with this spirit. I'm not going to trespass against your authority. That's your wife. If you want to keep her and your demon, and you should have saw the demon. The demon was like, yes, yes, take me home. Take me home. I'm scared of him. He's going to do something to me. You know, and I'm sitting there like, guy, are you really serious right now? Like, I, I'm going to be able to, like, help, help your wife out here. And he's like. No, I don't want her to go. I don't want her to go back the same way that she that she came. And I'm like, all right, then get out the way. Let me deal with this thing. I'm not going to embarrass your wife. I'm not going to do anything. She's embarrassing herself right now because it's demon and it's not her anyway. It's not her anyway. So the demon wants to embarrass her. I'm going to get her free so she won't be embarrassed anymore. And um, I remember the guy. He was like, okay, okay, and he walks off the stage. And uh, he's just standing there watching, and we end up getting the woman free. We get we pray for her, but but that spirit was trying to play on that. Uh, on that husband's that husband's weakness, he wanted to pray on the play on that husband's weakness. I'm sitting there like, dude, like like let it, let it go, man. Like, why are y'all here? You know, and I think it's funny because they probably didn't expect me to be the one that was going to be the one to cast them out because they probably had a problem with me by watching videos. But you know, she come up there, and that spirit was trying to put on a show, and it was trying to make. Uh, make the husband believe it was her. Like, oh, that man, oh my gosh. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. Get out of here with this mess. You sound like her Herod's daughter dancing around trying to mess around. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what Herod's daughter was in, that seducing spirit, seducing Herod to get the, the hit of John the Baptist. That's why you can't fall in to that. Uh, it, it was Herod, right? It was Herod, right, Keegan? It was, I believe it was Herod, yeah. So, so you don't want to fall into the, the, the ways of that seducing spirit. Remember, that seducing spirit hates prophetic people, hates prophetic people, and it will do anything in its nature. Listen, this is good, even with what's happening right now. Listen, if you're a prophet, trust me, or you're a prophetic person, I'm going to tell you that seducing spirit is always going to be trying to look for a way to take you out. That's just how it is. I don't know why it's like that, but it's like that, okay? I don't know why it's like that, but it's, <clears throat> but it's like that. So when you're dealing with that seducing spirit, you have to be wise as a serpent. You got to be smart. You got to know. You got to know what's up. You got to say, hey, 
You ain't seducing me, you ain't tricking me. But I've seen well-meaning ministers actually get seduced into deliverance session to believe a lie. Like, oh, Daniel, you know, you probably should just not be so hard on that person. I'm like, I'm like, hey, homie, that ain't, that ain't no person. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think, I'm like, are y'all crazy? Do y'all not see? Like, like you missed it. You know, oh, I think we should let that person rest. Let's let them rest. Yeah, it wants to rest because it's on the verge of coming out. And what you're going to do is you're going to be a part of the problem. All right? You're going to be a part of the problem. And 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 this demon is going to stay. And here's what I was getting to say, okay, guys? I was getting to say this. If you encounter that and these spirits trick you, especially the ones in the Marine Kingdom. Listen, the Marine Kingdom has strong seducing spirits. If that person leaves, you don't even know if that person's going to make it home and you don't know if they're going to make it back the next day sometimes. You got to know what type of demon you're messing with, okay? So be smart in deliverance sessions. Yes, sometimes you can get to a place where, all right, we'll meet the next day, but you have to be, you have to be wise because what will happen is that spirit will take the person out of the situation and that seducing spirit will actually that person, all right? So we need to be super, super, super smart, super, super smart, and super, super wise when it comes to dealing with seducing spirits. And, you know, you want to be mature in the deliverance sessions, all right? Those demons are tricky, all right? So make sure that the Holy, you come Holy Spirit equipped, you come with wisdom, you come with understanding, and and ask the Holy Spirit to give you keen discernment. You got to be able to know the disposition of a person's body, okay? Guys, you got to look from here to the bottom of their feet. From here to the bottom of their feet, I'll tell you why. And also look at a person's eyes. I've had moments in deliverance session, it, the person will be like, yeah, it looks like I don't have any demon. And all of a sudden, I'll see the eyes do something like, you know, the eyes will just move a certain way, and I'll just stay, gotcha, just like that. And then the demon will go, no, you weren't supposed to see me. So you got to be very keen because, remember, sometimes they will sit there, act like they're not there, and then what will happen is if you can catch them in the right moment, you got to catch them in the right moment. Your eyes got to see their eyes. You got to see their disposition. They'll be like, I think, I think I don't have a demon, <laughs> you know, or you'll see them go like that. I don't think I have a demon. Catch that stuff. Be keen. Be keen on that stuff, guys. Be keen on that stuff. Watch the disposition of a person's body when they're talking. And sometimes you'll be able to catch it in a moment and you'll be able to pull that thing out. Okay. So ask the Lord to give you eyes to see and ears to hear so that you do not get deceived when it comes to uh, demonic entities. We've also reached over a 1,000 people on this live, guys. Uh, praise the Lord Jesus. Let's co continue to like and share. This information is amazing. It is amazing. It's good stuff, all right? Uh, before I continue on, I just want to tell you guys also, some of you are asking about being a forerunner. If you're on YouTube, I do have a way you can become a forerunner through the memberships, or you can go on the website, which is the best way, supernaturallife.org supernaturallife.org and you will be able to become a forerunner on there. That's how you get involved in this ministry. And trust me, everything I'm talking about, you will be taught in, in more depth. Amen. Um, what's another one? Uh, the Marine Kingdom is some of the most talking demons I think I've ever seen. And also in the Marine Kingdom, guys, they're some of the most theatrical demons. Okay, I believe a lot of times this stuff that you guys see on the internet when people are uh, exposing uh, these ministers and stuff for doing deliverance a certain way, like myself, is because they don't travel to different nations. <clears throat> Listen, I'm going to tell you something, Americans. I'm an American. Our demons are not like the demons in Africa. Our demons are not like the demons in Asia. Our demons are not like the, the demons in Europe. Okay, they're cultural too. All right, so just know that. We, you got us in America, listen, us in America, we need to recognize that we don't have all the info and all the things, okay? Uh, and, and that's the problem. People think 
that as the American church goes, every other church goes. No, it does not work that way. So we got to get off our high horse here in the deliverance circuit in America. All right? We need to. So um, when you're dealing with the Marine Kingdom, they're very theatrical, and they do some theatrical stuff. Also, the, those spirits are so much out, meaning so much out in this realm through the spirit, that you can actually sometimes catch them by the spirit. And, and I know a lot of people don't understand this. I'll go deeper teaching for you guys when I do the deliverance school uh, in the Forerunners. I'll talk about how you can, you can grab by the spirit and stuff like that. Some of you might remember, you remember the old school intercessors when they do deliverance? They'll, they act like they're, they're, they're grabbing and they're pulling stuff off of people and stuff. It's the same thing. You grab that demon in the spirit. You can actually, guys, cast out demons by grabbing in the spirit and pulling out. You can do that. But that takes faith and that takes maturity. Okay? That takes faith and that takes maturity. That's a whole new thing. Because remember, a lot of people will say, oh, he didn't say in Jesus' name. Hold on, guys. If you do a study on that, you'll find out it means you're coming in Jesus' name. You're coming in Jesus. You're coming in the authority and the personhood. In, uh, not the, well, the person, yeah, he's in you. I mean, the Holy Spirit's in you. So the person of Christ is coming through you by the Holy Spirit, right? They're recognizing Jesus in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that means you're coming in Jesus' name. But we say in Jesus' name just so people will know what power we're operating in and the things that we're doing. But you can cast out demons, guys, without a word. Sometimes you can just look, and just your eyes, if you really understand where you're from, is enough to cast a demon out. Even your finger. <laughs> Jesus said, by the finger of God, I cast out demons. If a handkerchief can get the job done, listen, if a handkerchief can get the job done, trust me, there's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can do. But that's a whole deeper teaching that I'll put out uh, for the forerunners. All right. So anyway, when you're dealing with the Marine Kingdom, they're very eccentric, they're very theatrical, and some there's nothing wrong with you give them a little bit of theatrical business. What am I saying? Let them know what's up. Let them know that all that that running around, that jumping up and down, that crazy acting that they do, say, "Hey, hold on a second. Put your feet to the ground." You know, you'll see me say, "Hey, come here." Like that sometimes, and the demon will look real funny and the demon will be like doo, 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 doo. it's because it recognizes my authority in Christ guys you know why other ministers get mad about that because demons will never recognize their authority while they're in their pride so what do they do instead of learning what I'm doing they attack what I'm doing as you guys know okay some of you on here are still trying to figure me out I think look you're not I'm like the wind I float around like the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost tell me go left I go left he says go right I go right I just do what Jesus tells me to do and I'm operating <clears throat> in faith by the Holy Spirit. So I'll say, hey, come in. And that thing, do, 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 do. And then I'll say, stand still. Put your feet on the ground and stuff like that. People think I'm being mean. It's so funny when I look on the Internet and people are like, he's so mean. Look how he's treating these women. Look how he's treating these men. He, well, he, I bet he does this to his wife, blah, blah, blah. I see some of the craziest stuff on the Internet. And I'm like, man, no wonder you guys will never walk in uh, power and authority because you don't do nothing but attack the ones who walk in it all the time. So that's another thing, guys. If you want to cast out demons, always walk in humility. Always walk in humility. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Do not, listen, do not allow yourself to crucify the other servants of God. Because that will nullify you in the authority in the kingdom of God. And you will have to go and get right with Jesus. Okay? And again, I see people, you know, they say stuff. Listen, I don't boast in my own strength. Everything I do, I boast in Christ. He gets all the glory, honor, and praise through my life. Amen? I just walk with this thing. Okay? I walk in it because I've done it for a little, little while. Okay? But never... Speak against God's servants that are doing the work. Or you will not, it, it, who you will be in trouble with is not the person. You'll be in trouble with God. And then you'll lose, you will lose actually some grace when it comes to dealing with the demonic realm because actually you have become just like the devil accusing God's people. So 
That's why I tell you all the time, guys, don't get caught in the trend of call out. Okay. Make sure that you know that you know that you know when somebody is false. Are you gonna you probably ain't gonna walk in power and authority appropriately? All right. So make sure that you are not speaking against God's servants. That's why I don't do it. I don't do it. I get irritated by some of some of them irritate the snot out of me. I can't stand some of the stuff that they say and do. But I don't dare say that they're false and stuff like that. I got to know that I know that I know. So that's just the key to me. Trust me. If you act like the devil, it's going to be hard to deal with the devil. All right? It's going to be hard to deal with the devil. So stubborn demons, stubborn demons will always put up a fight. But if you stand firm in faith and you have the faith of a mustard seed and you know your authority, you know your position, you know the word of God, remember the word of God is the sword then you will win the battle. And I'm talking about stubborn demons. I'm not talking about altars that you can encounter. Okay, I'm not talking about trauma wounds that come up and people start crying and stuff and you think it's a demon. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about real stubborn demons, actual stubborn demons. Okay, now there's another thing where sometimes, all right, I want to give you guys this information. I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to do this, that people will, witches, will have altars that are built about a person. And when I say altars, I mean like A-L-T-A-R. They've built an altar for that person. It depends on what country you're in. They do different things, okay? So they've built an altar, and you're wondering why this person can't get free. It's because you have to disconnect them from the altar that has been built that somebody who's doing witchcraft in their life uh, has built for them. So you have to actually uh, use... You actually have to use the sword of the spirit to sever that so that they can be separated from that altar. And then you can deal with the demon. So sometimes you'll come against demonic forces where there is a witch who has built an altar uh, to, 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 to afflict somebody. And you need to get revelation and a word of knowledge, right? Revelation and a word of knowledge about that in that person's life. So sometimes the demons will act stubborn. They won't go because of things like that. Sometimes demons will act stubborn and not go because the person has unforgiveness and they're actually acting like the devil and they're in agreement with the devil. So sometimes you want people to go ahead and uh, forgive a person. That's why we lead people through uh, repentance. All right. And when I say repentance, I'm not talking about repentance to believe on Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. No, I'm talking about uh, turn on to right believing and turn into the turn to the word of God, which tells you to forgive those who do bad to you. Love actually bless them. Those who persecute you, bless them. <laughs> I mean, you, you see, don't be offended. So what happens is they're offended and they become pitiful, like I said. So unforgiveness will cause this stuff to happen. So sometimes the demons will put up a fight because they will not forgive. And one of the things God has told us to do, forgive. Jesus forgave you, so you forgive them, right? It's not about us. It's about him, and it's about us representing the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. If you guys are just tuning in, I've said this several times in the live. I want to also tell you, make sure you're liking, liking and sharing. Okay. <clears throat> so also forgive because demons will put up a fight, man. They will put up a heavy fight if the person has unforgiveness. I've had demons tell me before through people, they'll be like, I'm not leaving because they won't forgive their mother and they'll mock and stuff like that. And I'll be like, all right, go down. I want to speak to the person. And I'll say, do you want to forgive your mother? Like, I don't want to forgive her because she hurt my feelings. But you're over here. You want to get free, right? Well, yeah, there's. I said, okay, then you got to forgive your mother. And simply confessing and releasing it and getting that. Sometimes there's a spirit of unforgiveness there that needs to go. Simply releasing that and confessing that will set that person free. So, guys, you know, the power of God shows up, but also use every tool that you have. That's another tool. Get a person to forgive. You know, if the Lord reveals there's something they need to renounce, allow them to renounce it. Jesus became the curse, right? He became the curse so we could be blessed. If they're still walking in generational curses, what's their problem? They need the revelation of what Christ did on the cross. Tell them the curse is broke. Tell them to break the curse. I break the curse. Praise God. You do. You want what Jesus did for you on the cross, right? Amen. Well, we command that curse be broken in Jesus' name because the blood is enough. Hallelujah. Um. What else? I want to make sure I've given you guys uh, some, some a, a lot of stuff with stubborn demons. Um, yeah, I think I think I've given you really good stuff. I've given you guys a lot of information tonight. I've given you a lot of information. So um, here's what I want to do right now, guys. 
<clears throat> if you've been blessed, drop a five again. If you've been blessed, because I'm about to, I'm going to pray for some folks here in a minute, okay? So don't, don't tune out yet or you might miss the prayer point. I'm going to actually pray. But also what I want to do is I want to talk to some of you guys in the comment section and uh, stuff like that. Now, I'm going to do something different when I do live streams, okay, guys? <clears throat> I'm going to do something different when I do live streams. When I get, I want to give you guys the times to give into what was taught tonight. It's totally up to you. Be led by the Lord. Um, depending on what, Ven if you give through Cash App, if you give through Venmo, or if you give through PayPal, I want you if you're giving through Cash App, I will just pray over you. I'll be able to see it coming through. Um, if you give through PayPal or Venmo when I put it up, put what you need prayer for. And while we're on the live, I'll do my best to pray for as many of these as I possibly can. Okay? So make sure you guys uh, do that. I want to be able to pray for you guys. But if you've been blessed, you know, you, want, you, you don't want to definitely dine and dash if you've been blessed by this because I believe you'll partake of the grace of what's been taught here today. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the links up here really fast. And if you feel led to give, go ahead and I will come right back and I'll bless you. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll do it this way so you guys can still see me on the screen. Here's the ways to give, guys. I'm just going to play my boy Isaiah's song really quick, give you guys a second to give, but I'll hang out with you for a second. I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Cause truly you've been really on my mind. And your presence with my soul alive. How can I be known and your name not be lifted high? Oh. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Tell me the truth and I promise you did. God is in rhythm, bro. Tell me what it is. Spirits moving even in the kid. If you think it's fake, then it is what it is. Ain't no cap in my rap. I tell you right now, I got spirit moving. If you not live for Christ, then you ain't winning, boy. You losing. switch back over here. I'm going to hang out with you guys for a second. There we go. I saw a bunch of you guys coming in on here, uh, given for some reason, I don't know why, but my cash app is acting crazy. I'm going to go over, I'll give it a second. Um, but I want to pray over you guys prayer requests that came in individually on here. I want to take about a few minutes to do so. Uh, just give me a second. Make sure everything is working well. Uh, many of you, many of you gave, but I don't see the requests on here. Give me just a second, guys. Hang with me. I want to pray over your prayer requests. Of course, the apps want to act uh, want to act funny, Keegan. Right now, I thought I thought you could. I thought I'm just talking to Keegan right now, guys. I thought you could actually see their uh, requests on here, but I don't guess you can. Can you? I'm talking to you, Keegs. I guess he don't hear me. 
Ah, uh, why is this app acting up? I'm gonna pray regardless, but I was I was trying to see the direct request. Are you guys okay? I'll play for pray for Kenza. I see you right here. Um, I pray that the Lord will use you and your family mightily, Kenza, in Jesus' name, to set the captives free for the glory of God. For the glory of God. Why in the world is this doing this? It's never done this before. And I don't have nobody helping me. Ah, uh, I don't know if you guys have given on uh I'm I'm learning this guys. I'm learning something new. I know that you can do it on I want to pray over these. Okay. I got you. I got you guys now. All right. So, Noella, I'm going to pray for you. I pray right now for that anxiety to be released from your life and I pray right now for that upcoming surgery exam. I pray that the grace grace of Jesus Christ will be up on it. I pray right now, Justin, for Audrey and Ben's salvation. I pray right now for Audrey and Ben's salvation right now in Jesus' name. Christopher, I pray right now for family, kids, the rebellion to be released from your life. I pray for anger. It says always needs to clean all the time. I pray that OCD to be released from her life right now in Jesus' name. I pray right now grace over this. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I pray right now, Ricky Lynn, for your son and, and his friend to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a mighty way. And I pray that they will be used as mighty evangelists in this earth. In Jesus' name. And as I read some of this stuff, guys, if, God, if the Lord drops a prophetic uh, word in my heart or something, I'll make sure to release it, okay? I pray right now, Tricia, that your daughter's reoccurring asthma attacks come to an end. I command them to stop now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jacob, I command Jacob Miller, I command right now all of that doubt, sabotage, and anger to be released from your life that came from your childhood. I'm seeing an image of you. I believe it's your father, is what's coming to my mind. Uh, there's a lot been a lot of talking down. I command that to be broken off of your life now in Jesus' name. And I believe that chronic back pain has come from just having a faulty foundation of uh, the doubt and unbelief. So I command that doubt and unbelief to be released and I command your back to be completely healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, let me see if I can figure this out over here. Oh, on email. Ah, okay, Maria. Okay, I ah, thank the Lord. Let me let me see if I can. Yeah, I I don't I don't see that. Okay, I got it right here. Bless you, Cynthia. I see your seed. Um, I command right now, Leah, your husband to be set free. <clears throat> Leah, I, I, Leah Whitworth is your name. It's funny. I I felt like your husband when I said that word. I feel like he has a pastoral call on his life. I feel like he has a fathering mantle on his life. So I pray right now that your husband gets the freedom that he needs and y'all will walk hand in hand for the glory of God in Jesus name. Teresa, I command in Jesus name, your, your daughters, Zoe and Ju Julia to be used mightily for the Lord and every demonic attack that would come against him to be broken in Jesus mighty name. And I command those stubborn demons that generational curses, the witchcraft, to be broken from your family now in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, today you will start to see a change. You'll start to start to see the manifestation of the grace of God on your life in a greater way. The things you have prayed, you will see in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your bless blessing, Stacy. I pray that the Lord um, will allow you to write the song, and he will. He will get into those moments of prayer, pray in tongues, put a good instrumental on it, let the song come to be in Jesus name, in Jesus name. And I pray right now for the recovery of Annie's, Anna's intestines from that disease of that diverticulitis and that the infection will go away from the small intestine and the bowel obstruction right now in Jesus name. And for the seromas to be as, to absorbed and healed in Jesus mighty name. Lord, answer Anna's prayers. You know, guys, I like this. I think I'm going to do this more often. I think this is a good thing. I like doing this. This is good. This is good. You guys will be blessed. Um, Nancy, in the name of Jesus, may your seed bring the financial breakthrough for you 
and for your family. In Jesus' name, hope may your seed produce more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Katrina Evans, may you be blessed above, above and beyond. In Jesus' name. Akovi, I, I pray right now that you will have the breakthrough that you need. In Jesus' name, as you have planted that seed. Jennifer, may your manna flood. You know what, Jennifer, I'm going to say something. I believe you're even going to see manna in your Bible really, really see it. I'm going to just hold, you, hold, that, hold on to that and see the testimony in the future. In Jesus' name. Diana Shiflet, I pray that what you have received tonight, you will take with you. May this impartation be upon your life in a mighty, mighty way. In a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jacob, I pray right now, all the doubt sabotage. Oh, I've already prayed for you. Okay, it's right there. But you receive it again. <laughs> receive it again. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray over every Cash App seed. I know that we can't really write on, on Cash App, but I'm going to pray right now. Every person who has given through any other means, Lord, I pray right now that whatever is attached to their seed that they have sowed into this teaching, first of all, may the grace of God increase on their life. May the grace of God increase on their life from watching this, and may all of their uh, requests in prayer for their family, for their careers, for their finances, for their healing, for their deliverance, may it be answered now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, I really felt this on my spirit, guys. I felt like saying that you guys, uh, go ahead right now. If you if you know that you've sowed tonight, and even if you haven't, because God's grace good, but I, especially for the people who have sowed tonight, and you forerunners that are on here that give all the time, just keep your, put your hands out. I believe the Lord is going to start delivering people right now. He's going to start delivering people. Lord, I thank you right now for this teaching that I was able to do tonight on stubborn demons. Lord Jesus, I believe in this teaching that you are even setting people free because they have humbled themselves in giving and also just being here and listening. And also they're sowing into the ministry as forerunners, Lord, that you are, or you're going to bless their humility in a big way because you love cheerful givers. So I command right now in the mighty name of Jesus, get ready. Some of you guys is going to be crazy. I'm telling you, you're going to be testifying in the chat. I command right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every one of you stubborn demons, you stubborn familiar spirits, you stubborn marine spirits, you stubborn Leviathan spirits, you seducing spirits, Baal, Jezebel, all of you, I command you, even you unclean spirits that just want to stay locked in and bring people into immorality, listen to me right now and keep people in bitterness, anger, rejection. Your time in these people's life is up. So in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one true living God, I command you right now, you come up and out in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive your breakthrough. Receive your breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. Every generational curse is broken because Jesus became the curse so we could be blessed when he was hung on that tree. So I break those curses. I break every altar that has been built in anybody's name. I command it to come down to the ground right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and every demonic connection to that altar. I sever it now. No longer will that witch, no longer will that family member that is a witch be able to affect your life, be able to sabotage your relationships, be able to keep you from marriage. I break all of that right now in Jesus' name. No longer will witches astral project and come into people's rooms. I break that off right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I command, yeah, I saw that there's some people here, you're suffering with spirits of like, or the, the, you, you have thoughts of early death and stuff. I break them spirits of death, those, stu those, those stubborn spirits of death. I break its power right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, up and out of their life. Leave them all the way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I, I, I'm feeling by the Spirit, there's some things that have still been left. And some of you suffered through divorces and stuff like that. And there's been uh, just sabotaging spirits that came, abandonment from fathers and mothers coming from broken homes. I command every sabotaging spirit that came through that be broken from their life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Loose their life and never return in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Jesus' mighty name. Guys, is anything happening right now? Yeah, I command also every spirit of occult, divination, Freemasonry, all of that stuff. I break its power. Any spirits that came through other religions, I break your power right now. Up and out of their life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free in Jesus' name. And those struggling with fear, fear of commitment, I break all of that too in the mighty name of Jesus. Be loosed from their life in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. So guys, if you've had any uh, manifestations of God's spirit, if you're, if you're experiencing freedom, let me know. Let me know. Put it in the chat. Let's testify. Let's testify of the goodness of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Listen, and I tell you by the spirit of the Lord, your seeds are not in vain. Your seeds are not in vain. You will see a manifestation of God's goodness in your life. Yeah, I command that moving in your stomach. Put your hand on your stomach. I command that unclean spirit. Come up and out right now in Jesus' name. If your head is shaking, I command any python spirit that's been attached to your life restricting you. Come out of their life right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every one of them in Jesus' name. And anybody that has sickness in their body, anybody that needs healing, I command your body be healed. Backs, necks, heads, diseases, sicknesses be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Testify. Testify. Ah, look at the Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to sleep. I command that spirit that has been putting you to sleep, that has been making you lethargic, that deaf and dumb spirit, come out of a life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Looser. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I command any spirits of heartbreak that has been in you guys' life, I command that to be loosed from your life right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys, this has been a good one, man. This was a good teaching. It really was. I pray that you guys will go back and you'll, you'll, you'll take notes and stuff like that. Um, because this was a lot of information. I might even have to go back and take notes. <laughs> ah, it was amazing. It was amazing. So remember, if you're tuning in in the future, do me a favor, hit that like button and share, guys. And I'm going to come and do way more teachings. But guys, we have a prophetic school at the time of this teaching that's going on. If you want to be involved in the prophetic school, go to the supernaturallife.org, or you can join as a member on YouTube and um, be a forerunner through there. Or you can go on the website, guys, and join that way. We are doing prophetic schools. I have a foundational school already and stuff like that. You'll be a part of what we're doing here and receive impartation to take to the nations, to your family, to your city, to your state, wherever you want to go. And then we're just one big family anyway. So I just want to encourage you guys to be a part of what we're doing here. And we will have also the deliverance school coming out in the future too, where we'll go on deeper on topics, different types of spirits, all that type of stuff, so you guys can be equipped for the works of ministry. Because that's what it says in Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. It says, the apostle, prophet, and evangelist, pastor, and teacher are sent to equip the saints for the works of ministry. Yes, I pray for uh, the purpose within your career. I pray for strength going forward, Brianna. And I pray that your husband will walk in his authority in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Also, some of you are talking about scammers. Guys, do not listen to the scammers, okay? I am not telling you anything about an orphanage. You would hear it out of my own mouth here. Do not fall for scammers in the chat, okay? Just report them. Uh, it's going to be all that. Uh, no, there is not a, a specific fee. Uh, what I do is we have the forerunners who are our monthly partners and also who are invested in the ministry. And I, the way I give back to them is I do the schools, I do behind the scenes teachings and, and stuff like that. So that's what it is. So for this school is perf perfectly open to forerunners, but we we will, if you don't want to be a forerunner and you just want the school, we will have a uh, a way that you can access that through sewing. So, amen. All right, guys, this was good. Thank you for hanging out with me. I pray uh, that the God, that, that God, Jesus Christ, will use you more and more for his glory. All right, I love you guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful night, and I will see you soon. And if you want to know where I'm going to be, the events, if you want to know what state I'm going to be, I've already put new events up, Texas, New York, New Jersey, I'm coming your way. And Seattle, I'll be there too soon. 
in Jesus' name. So www.supernaturallife.org events. Uh, I'll see where well, I'll see you guys somewhere. And in April, I'll be in the I'll be in Europe for a Europe tour. So yeah, that's what I got so far. So anyway, that's it. See you later, guys. It is far from finished. It is far from finished. All right. God bless you all. Amen and amen. I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on my mind. I feel like it's been like that all the time. I got your presence on my mind. I got your presence on I feel like it's been like that all the time. I feel like it's been like that all the time. Cause truly you've been really